Hi, it's Mark for Ableton Daily. Guess what, guys? I got my compressor back from the shop. For those of you that don't know, the compressor burned out, and I had to send it back to the company, and they sent it back almost like brand new about a week and a half, two weeks later. So I put it back in the rack, and I'm still making little adjustments to it to get the sound that I'm looking for. Uh, but let me know how you like it, if it's better or worse. I know the previous videos were a little bit distorted, so hopefully now it's a lot more pleasant and smooth to listen to. All right, this is uh, a continuation video from part one for drum programming for beginners. If you would like to view part one, please go to my YouTube channel and look up drum editing for beginners part one. And in the first video, we talked about how changing the velocity of the notes will dramatically change the groove of the beats as opposed to not doing any velocity change can sound very computerized and lack a little bit of a groove when you're playing back your tracks. Just to give you an example of this, I can go ahead and play this part here. This is before we've applied the velocity changes. And this is after. So you can see that we have a lot more groove there. And these two clips are identical. This is just a copy. So the way the notes have been placed are identical. The only thing different is the velocity values. If you would like to know more about that, please view part one of this video lesson. In this video, I'd like to talk about grids and MIDI clips. Now by default, Ableton Live usually has this snap to grid option checked. And all this means is that when you move the MIDI notes around, they will snap right to the grid just like this. So if you want it to go in between the grid, uh, you're not going to be able to do it. This is also depending on the resolution that you have set for the MIDI editor. And you can change the resolution by just right clicking anywhere in an empty spot. And the menu will pop up and you can adjust the resolution of the grid right down here where it says fixed grid. And I can move this up to a 30 second note grid, just like that. Or we can move it down to a 16th note grid. There we go. And so I can just move this in between there. And this is cool. Like if you're working with, uh, you know, doing some techno chords or something with the piano or whatever. Uh, but when it comes to humanizing and creating more of a groove for your beats, it's best not to have the grid turned on. I'm going to come up here and turn it off. Or I can also just right click and then choose off on this menu here. So now we can move these MIDI notes around. We are not restricted to just the grid. We can freely come in here and have full control on how the swing and how the groove sounds for our drum patterns. Another tip, let's just say that you wanted to start step recording of rhythm, but you don't have a MIDI clip to work with. I remember the old days, uh, if I wanted to, before I knew how to do this, if I wanted to step record a rhythm, I would record a little MIDI part first and then double click on the MIDI part and then start editing the notes from there. But let me show you a little tip that some beginners don't know. If you come over here and I'll just make a new MIDI channel, a really easy way to create MIDI clips without recording in live is just to bring the mouse over and I'll click right here at measure four and I can click and drag out a selection for the range that I want for the pattern. So let's just say if you wanted a two bar pattern, you can just drag the selection out across two bars. And as soon as you do that, go ahead and right click inside of that selection. And right down here, you have an option to insert MIDI clip, just like that. You can also come up here to create and insert MIDI clip from here as well. All right and it probably won't allow you to insert a MIDI clip unless you make a selection first. So don't forget to grab the mouse, create a selection, right click, and then you have your insert MIDI clip. Now that we've created this MIDI clip, all we have to do is just double click on it. It looks like it's already selected. And right down here, we have our MIDI editor. So we can just turn on the little headphone button here and go through here and start laying out our rhythms for this drum pattern. And of course, you'll want to have a sampler or a drum machine instrument on this channel so you can hear the sounds. Another option is to click on the fold button. The fold button allows us to only see the notes that are applied to the note tracks. Without this turned on, we see all the note tracks in the MIDI editor and 
the notes that we're currently working with seem a little bit small. So by having fold turned on, this brings everything into view so we can focus on only the notes that we're working with and not the other extra space that's inside the MIDI editor there. So there are some tips when creating beats with the MIDI editor. My name's Mark, this is Ableton Daily. Hey, if you like the videos, please subscribe, send me a comment, and I'll get back to you. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.